Hello and good morning. Welcome to worship here with us at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis. And I am the pastor here. And welcome. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. And I am the deacon. And I'm happy that you could join us in worship today. Hello, my name is Wendy DeVore, and I'm the interpreter for today. I want to make an announcement really quick. Oh, I'm going to make an announcement quick. Before we do all of our um, getting into worship, um, because I realized like two days ago that Easter will be here very soon. <laughs> so I want everyone to kind of know what is coming. So next Sunday on the 28th of March in the afternoon, you uh, can come drive over to Bread of Life and pick up a bag of little supplies and treats for Holy Week. So we'll have a few things in the bag for you for Holy Week, as well as if you ordered flowers, if you ordered Easter flowers, you'll be able to pick those up next Saturday afternoon. That's on March 20 or Sunday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. It's on March 28th from one to three in the afternoon. The second thing then for Holy Week is that on Thursday, April 1st, we will have a worship service for you to participate in at home. Um, it will be similar to what we did last year with um, Holy Thursday when Jesus gives the Last Supper and it's Jesus sets us up for communion. And so we will remember those events um, from that first Holy Week. And then on, um, so that worship service will be on our YouTube channel, same as all these other worship services, same place, you'll be able to find it. And we'll have it posted and available at 6 p.m. So that while you're eating your supper, you can join in that worship service. And again, it's that's for Thursday, April 1st. And then on Good Friday, April 2nd, we will show again the um, Good Friday worship service from last year. Uh, it was a really powerful service. Justin Barlow was um, provided the ASL and um, it was really powerful and it was in the Bread of Life Sanctuary. And so we'll share that worship service again this year. It will be available for all of us to join in together on Friday, April 2nd at 6.30 p.m. And then on Easter Sunday morning, that's April 4th. We will have worship again, it'll be here on YouTube. So still we're all separated and in, in our own homes, but we will have worship with communion. And that will be um, at our usual time on Sunday mornings at 1030 AM. So I wanted to make sure to warn you all because pretty quick Easter is gonna be here and I don't want you to be um, feeling surprised or like you don't know what's coming. All right. And so now we enter into our worship. Today is Sunday, March 21st. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent and next week will be Palm Sunday. Wow, I can't believe that.
this week marks one year since we were in worship together at Bowl. It's hard to believe that too. Last year, we encouraged you to collect to collect up green leafy plants and to have a parade in honor of Jesus entering Jerusalem for Passover. Our focus today is breaking the chains And breaking the chains of shame and embarrassment for the purpose of healing and restoring individuals and communities. Yes, thank you, Dorothy. And now we encourage you to light a candle at home. And now Dorothy and I will both light a candle as well. Let this be the season you turn your face toward the one who calls to you. Please follow along, return, return to the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and also with you. Prayer of the day. Lord, you love and accept, but we are quick to judge and slow to accept others whom we consider lower than ourselves. But you show us the way of acceptance, forgiveness, and peace. We honor you for teaching us to love. We pray today in the name of Jesus, the one who is the center of love itself. Amen. And I will be reading from Psalms 84, verses 1 through 4 and 10 through 12. Lord, all-powerful, the place where you live is so beautiful. 
Lord, I cannot wait to enter your temple. I am so excited. Every part of me cries out to be with the living God. Lord, or all powerful, my King, my God. Even the birds have found a home in your temple. They make nests near your altar. And there they have their babies. Great blessings belong to those who live at your temple. They continue to praise you. One day in the courtyard of your temple is better than a thousand days anywhere else. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the temple of my God than live in the home of the wicked. The Lord God is like our sun and shield. The Lord gives us kindness and glory. He does not hold back anything good. from those whose life is innocent. Lord of heaven's armies, happy are the people who trust in you. My friends, uh, every once in a while, we need to introduce the gospel lesson because it, uh, there's a lot of stuff included and we don't have time to talk it all through in the sermon or in other places in worship. So I just want to make a couple notes about today's Bible lesson. Because um, I'm not going to preach on them. And it's not stuff that you would necessarily know um, when we read the, the lesson. So the first thing I want to note is that the name that the blind man uses for Jesus he cries out, son of David, son of David, have mercy on me. And that term son of David is a political title. So it draws attention to Jesus really in, in a way that is different than what Jesus has been doing. And it could be heard or seen as like a way for someone to take political power. And so that could be one reason why the crowd tells him to be quiet. Don't say that. You're drawing attention to Jesus and we don't want to do that. So I just want to lift that up that that could be one of the reasons why people tell him shh quiet. There are other reasons, but that could be one of them. That's not especially obvious reason when we read the Bible lesson. The second thing I want to make a note of is that sometimes our English Bible translations miss some things that were included in the original language. And so the Gospel of Luke was originally written in Greek. And in the story of Zacchaeus, the original Greek language suggests that Zacchaeus had a long time habit of giving away half of his income. And that he already practiced restoring, like if he cheated somebody, he already practiced giving money back. And in Greek, there's like all these different ways of showing actions. And there are some verbs that show, 
I did that in the past. I'm doing it now. I will keep doing it in the future. And English doesn't have that. And so in English, you would have to say, write like three sentences to make the same point as one word in Greek. And so we often narrow it down and it, we lose some of the meaning. And so I just want to lift that up that often we look at Zacchaeus as being like completely changed in one minute of interacting with Jesus. And the original Greek suggests that maybe Zacchaeus was already someone searching for Jesus, searching for and living a faithful life. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna preach about that today either. So I just wanted to lift that up because it's really important um, for us to maybe imagine Zacchaeus in a new way. So, and with that, I'll ask Dorothy to share the gospel lesson for today. A reading from the Gospel, Luke chapter 18, verses 31 through 19. Chapters 18, verses 31 through 19. Then Jesus talked to the 12 disciples alone. He said to them, listen. We are going to Jerusalem. Everything that God told the prophets to write down about the Son of Man will happen. He will be handed over to the foreigners who will laugh at him. Insult him and spit on him. They will beat him with whips and then kill him. But on the third day after his death, he will rise to life again. The apostles tried to understand this, but they could not. The meaning was hidden from them. Jesus came near the city of Jericho. There was a blind man sitting beside the road. He was begging people for money. When he heard the people coming down the road, he asked, what is happening? The blind man was excited and said, Jesus, son of David, please help me. The people who were in front leading the group criticized the blind man. They told him to be quiet, but he shouted more and more, son of David, please help me. Jesus stopped there and said, bring that man to me. When he came close, Jesus asked him, what do you want for me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, you can see now. You are healed because you believe. Then the man was able to see. He followed Jesus, thanking God. Everyone who saw this Praise God for what happened. Jesus was going through the city of Jericho. And in Jericho, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a wealthy, very important tax collector. He wanted to see who Jesus was. There were many others who wanted to see Jesus too. Zacchaeus was too short to see above the people. 
So he ran to a place where he knew Jesus would come. Then he climbed a sycamore tree so he could see him. When Jesus came to where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and saw him in the tree. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hurry, come down. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus hurried and came down. He was happy to have Jesus in his house. Everyone saw this. They began to complain. Look at the kind of man Jesus is staying with. Zacchaeus is a sinner. Zacchaeus said to the Lord, I want to do good. I will give half of my money to the poor. If I have cheated anyone, I will pay them back four times more. Jesus said, today is the day for this family to be saved from sin. Yes, even this tax collector is one of God's chosen people. The son of man came to find lost people. And save them. Here ends the gospel reading. My friends, grace and peace to you from Jesus. He is the one who notices you. The one who comes to you. And asks, what do you want me to do for you? In the last five weeks here at Bread of Life uh, during Lent, we have been focusing in worship on a theme of breaking the chains. Each week we have focused on uh, the kinds of chains that can keep us bound up and tied down. Chains that hold us back from reaching out to one another or chains that cause us to doubt ourselves and to doubt others. We are also making paper chains. We're, we're making chains because I got mixed up at the beginning. And so we're just going with it. <laughs> but we're adding a link to our chain. It helps us to see our Lenten journey and at the end, then we can look back through our chains to remember what God has been teaching us. How God is calling us out of where we are stuck. Calling us to break the chains that bind others. And then I suggest when we get to Holy Saturday or early on the morning of Easter Sunday, we shred, we tear up all these papers and then we'll have confetti for Easter. So that's, that's our theme for, for this Lent season and for today we are asking Jesus to come and hammer and chisel away at the chains of shame and embarrassment that hold us back. Because when we are freed from shame, which tells us, shame tells us, I am bad. And embarrassment makes us feel like we want to hide. When we're freed from those things, we can accept ourselves. We can accept others in new ways. And healing and restoration 
begins again. So today, I really want us to wonder about the question that Jesus asks the blind man in this gospel lesson. What do you want me to do for you? Dorothy lifted this question up during our Bible study on Wednesday morning. It really got me thinking, if Jesus asked me that question, what would I say? And if Jesus asks you that question, how would you respond? What would you say to Jesus? I will tell you, I have someone in my life who asks me a similar question. The question is, what do you want? Notice the question is not, what do you need? And it's not, what should you want? The question is, what do you want? And it stumps me. I don't have a really good answer. And I've been thinking and praying on it for a long time, like looking inside saying, what do I want? And this person doesn't accept my sort of half-baked answers or hiding behind the concept of being a servant. Instead, the person keeps asking and saying, what, Michelle, what do you want? And today Jesus brings this question to us. What do you want me to do for you? The blind man has an answer for Jesus. Do we? Now I'll note first the blind man cries out for mercy. Please, Lord. Please, Lord, be merciful and kind to me. He's saying, notice me. Don't walk past me. Don't ignore me. Take time to really know who I am. Understand me. That is mercy. This is what the blind man needs. He needs this. And somehow, somehow in this crowd with all the noise and all the people in this busy parade and all sorts of things going on, somehow Jesus hears him. And this is really hard to do for people who can hear when there is a lot of noise around, when there are a lot of people around, it's really hard to hear just like one voice. It's similar with signing. Like if you're in a room full of people who are signing, it's very hard to like keep your attention on one person. Because everything just kind of blends together and it becomes really difficult to hear or to see anyone distinctly. And yet Jesus is able to hear the voice of this man who is sitting on the ground and he's probably behind the legs of a bunch of people who are standing in front of him. Now, other people around him say, shh, 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 stop, 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 don't talk, don't shout, be quiet. But you know, this blind man is um, stubborn and determined because stories about what Jesus has done, the way that Jesus has healed people, the way Jesus has cared for people, 
those stories have gotten to reach this man. And so here in this moment, he is going to do everything he can to get Jesus's attention. He's not ashamed. He's not feeling that he is bad. He is crying out to Jesus. And he is not embarrassed to ask for help. And Jesus hears him. And not only does Jesus hear him, but then Jesus seeks him out. He goes looking for this one seemingly unimportant person. And Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? To, as I was preparing for today, I did a Google search uh, of this question to see like what kind of ideas pop up. When, when uh, what do we ask from Jesus? And really, um, like almost all the things I found suggest that we, we tend to dismiss this question in our current environment. And we do that in kind of two ways. The first way is we say, well, really, we should be doing something for Jesus. And then the other way we dismiss the question and say, that's not the, we shouldn't answer that question is that it's not possible for us to really answer the question correctly, that we will ask for the wrong thing, that we will want the wrong thing. And so there's no way for us to answer the question. Now, I think that's a way of like, just not answering Jesus. <laughs> oh no 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 I should I should be doing something for you or because I don't know the right answer I just won't tell you I'll be I'll just be quiet and not tell you and as I told you a few minutes ago this is my problem I can't figure out what I want and still Jesus is asking this question and he does it more than one time. Like it's not just Jesus asks this one person, but Jesus asks this question many times in the gospels. And Jesus asks this blind man, a person who is pushed aside, someone who has like no job opportunity, his, his the only thing he gets to do is beg. That's who Jesus is asking. What do you want me to do for you? And then Jesus listens. And Jesus breaks apart those chains of shame and embarrassment that could have kept him from, uh, uh, from answering Jesus' question. Jesus acknowledges and recognizes this one beloved child of God and asks, what do you want me to do for you? So I'm wondering if Jesus comes to you when you're praying, when you are crying out, help me, Jesus, I need help. Are you ready to answer? What do you want Jesus to do for you? It's not what do you need? It's not 
What should you want? What do you want Jesus to do for you? And are you ready to trust that Jesus will do it? Are we ready to believe that Jesus will remove the chains that bind us? That Jesus has the power to do that? Are we ready to believe that? Are we ready to ask and to trust that Jesus will pay attention to us? Are we ready to ask Jesus for what we truly, truly want? I think this blind man's faith is humbling. He first cries out for what he needs. He needs mercy. Then, then he trustingly tells Jesus what he most wants. He wants to recognize Jesus, to understand Jesus, and to trust in Jesus' power and love. As I said at the beginning of the sermon, all through this Lent, we have been noticing the kinds of chains that keep us from this bold faith that the blind man shows us. Faith that asks and faith that trusts that our requests will be honored. We use different things to kind of keep ourselves protected from needing to like practice that faith. And those things that we use to kind of keep people away, they start to act like chains. They keep us stuck here far away from other people. Chains like labeling others and chains like our fears of other people. people who might be different than us or chains um, that show up like our own pride and our own self-importance or maybe on the other side of pride and self-importance are chains of despair that keep us from hoping Or maybe the chains that hold us in a place of privilege and make a, we have all these habits of devaluing other people. Or maybe they're chains of shame and embarrassment that keep us from asking for what we need and want. My friends, Jesus can and will break those chains that hold us. Jesus can and will break through the barriers that we put up. Because Jesus notices us and comes to us. But Maybe we prefer to keep things the way they've been. Maybe we don't want to give up control and trust Jesus totally. 
Maybe we are afraid to let go of those chains that hold us. So I think that brings up the question again. What do you want Jesus to do for you? Are we ready to trust that Jesus will break our chains for us? Are we ready to follow where Jesus leads us? away from that pile of chains? Are we ready? of the people. Let us pray for all people of God and their needs. Merciful God, help us know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. Turn our attention towards others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, God. Help us to hold hope for one another and for the world, even in times that feel hopeless. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Now please share a sign of peace with one another. And you might do that by texting someone or calling them or maybe sending them an email or a letter. There are many options, but please share the piece with one another. And Dorothy, peace be with you. And peace also be with you.
we're getting really close to the end of Lent. You can see uh, with the candles behind Dorothy, now there's only four of those candles left that are lit because each week of Lent and then on the, the special days, so we have Ash Wednesday at the beginning of Lent, and then at the end we have Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday, and Good Friday. So each of those days we put out a light. And as we get closer to the end, it feels like there's more judgment, more exclusion, and less acceptance and less inclusion in the world. And every year we kind of go through this process and we tell again the story about how Jesus was betrayed and how Jesus suffered and in fact died. All so that God will be shown to the world. And this Sunday, this fifth Sunday of Lent, we acknowledge that there are times when shame and embarrassment keep us from accepting ourselves and from accepting others. And so we pray, we pray, God, that for the purposes of healing and restoring individuals and communities, that you would break the chains that hold us in shame, that hold us in embarrassment. We ask God to renew our faith so that God will be shown to the world. We ask God to help us to acknowledge and accept one another just as Jesus acknowledges and accepts us so that hope and promise will shine through our lives. And at the same time, we'll put out another light. We will acknowledge our mistakes and our sins. We confess that we get distracted, that we hurt and ignore our neighbors. And so we ask God for forgiveness and for hope. So at this time, I invite Dorothy to put out one of the candles. Let us pray. God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us to put our trust in you. Amen. As we focus again on God during Lent, we are invited to put our faith into action. And one way that we put 
our faith into action is by giving generously. And giving um, some of your money to this church helps us to continue our mission, which it's a very special mission to share the good news that God loves deaf people and their families. And that here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people and their families too. And so when you help support Bread of Life financially, you help share this good news. God loves you. So we invite you to give generously. You can send a check to Bread of Life. And I want to let you know we do check our mailbox regularly. So money doesn't stay sitting in our mailbox. So you can send a check or you can use an online giving option. And um, you can find that information on our website. Um, and I'll put that at the bottom of the screen so you'll be able to see the website address. So at this time, we invite you to prepare your offerings. And now the offering prayer. Let us give God our gifts and pray. Lord, when you open your hands, we are filled with good things. May these gifts be signs of our gratitude and the love which embraces all your children. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer with us. This will not be void. Receive the blessings before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>